Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm really happy that you're here. In this video, I will be talking about the Capricorn full moon on July 21st, also called the Buck full moon. It has many names, but that's one other name that it has, and how you can use that to inform and enhance your writing practice. Before we get to the details of the full moon, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Johnny. I'm a published fiction writer and a retired adjunct writing professor. For two decades, I helped college students get their words on the page. Now I teach fiction writing and screenwriting to adults in custody. I call myself a word witch, and I believe I'm on this earth to heal the world through stories, whether it's the ones that I write and tell or the ones that I help you write and tell. I would sincerely appreciate your likes, shares, and subscribes in helping me grow this channel and do more of my quest and my mission to heal the world through stories because as I always say stories can heal the world so let's do it together and one last thing before we get to the full moon this is your last chance to register for the third in a series of three webinars they've all been the same so you haven't missed anything of the alchemy of writing webinar and it's about how to conjure and nurture your writing practice the next one will be on Monday July 22nd and in this webinar I will walk you through the four keystones that you need to create and maintain an enduring writing practice. And if you can't make it, not a big deal at all. We will send you a replay as well as any and all worksheets and guides that I mentioned during the webinar. Also in the webinar, I will tell you about how you can get my full Alchemy of Writing course absolutely free so you don't want to miss it. I'll put a link in the description so that you can register. All right, I would love to see you there. Okay, now let's get to this full moon. As I said, it will be in Capricorn and it happens on Sunday, July 21st here in the Northern Hemisphere. I am in the United States on the West Coast. So for us, it happens at 3.17 a.m. Pacific time. And you might remember that last month, the full moon was also in Capricorn. And this is a very rare occurrence to have two full moons back to back that are in the same sign, but it happened that way this year because this was a leap year. As I said in last month's full moon video, it was about setting up what will come to light around this full moon. So you might want to think back to what was happening for you, any intentions you set with that last full moon, and just see what has happened between now and then. And it could even be within these last two weeks, between the, the new moon that just happened, I think it was July 5th, uh, and the full moon on July 21st. So this month, I consulted the interpretations of Jimmy with the tarot ship. You might want to check him out. He does tarot readings, sort of wrapped in astrology. He's a lovely person and very positive, supportive readings. He's really nice to listen to. I also consulted the amazing Rick Levine's interpretations of this full moon, and then just some random things that I kind of sense interpret myself and have thrown in for good measure. All right, so let's start with Jimmy first. He says that this full moon is about relationships and partnerships, right? So this could be work, career, love, romance, but in terms of your writing, what might that be? Did you submit your work last month? Could be that if it gets accepted now, that is about a relationship between you and the publisher, right? Whether it's a, a publisher of a novel, whether it's a magazine or a journal, that creates a relationship, a professional one, right? Did you make some decision about your writing practice within the last month? Did you realize that something you've been doing isn't working and you need to change it? And I always talk about how our writing practice is a reflection of our relationship with ourselves. And I truly believe that honoring our impulse to write is an act of self-love. And so you might want to think about this full moon in terms of relationship in that context. Your relationship with yourself, your creativity, your writing practice. Has that changed in the last month? How does it relate to where you were a month ago and where you are now? The point is that something will likely come to a culmination of some sort. Like I said, based on whatever you put in place or decided a month ago at the last Capricorn full moon, or maybe even since the new moon on July 5th. It could be that you are wrapping up a writing project that you've been working on for a long time. So the full moon is in Capricorn. And when we think about the fact that Capricorn's ruling planet is Saturn, right? So this is about responsibility and discipline and structure. This might give you a clue how things have transformed for you over the last month or two weeks. Because like I said, the, the full moon last month was in Capricorn and it is again this month. And so with all this structure and discipline, have you found that you've become more structured? Have you found that you now know you need to be more structured and disciplined? 
and have you made some clear decision about how to move forward with your practice. Also on this day, when the moon is full, Pluto will be conjuncting the full moon. So we can think about this as being about secrets and revelations and breakthroughs. And it also might be about power plays. And when we think about this in terms of writing, what kind of power play in your writing have you made or are you making? What have you done to set yourself up as a person of influence in regard to your writing? And if you're thinking, you know, as I say this, of fame and fortune, that's not quite what I mean. I mean, it could mean that, but our words can have great influence on other people. And sometimes we don't even know about it. So it could be that the way you were setting yourself up or have set yourself up to be a person of influence is you've gotten more clear about what your practice needs to look like, or you've made a decision about what to remove from your life so that you can write more religiously, more consistently. Jimmy also says to be mindful of overindulging right now. So what could that mean in terms of writing? Well, it could mean a couple of things. I think it could mean, have you been doing something, overindulging in something that prevents you from writing? So I talk about this in one of the keystones in the Alchemy of Writing uh, webinar. You know, the planning and scheduling part of creating a practice are really important. They seem kind of like no-brainers. I'm like, duh, why do we need to talk about these? But it's very important because we are very habitual creatures, some of us more than others. And we can get into these habits and routines that don't really serve us in any kind of helpful way in terms of our futures and could get in the way of our writing practices. So maybe you've been overindulging in, I don't know, drinking, smoking weed. And this is not to be judgmental because, you know, we live in weird times and I don't know many people who don't need some extra little something to kind of get through. And it could be getting lost in books, just reading, reading, reading and escaping. Could be watching TV or movies to escape. Could be playing games. One of my go-tos without like a knee-jerk thing for me is to just pick up my phone and start playing a game on it. So if we can think about that in terms of overindulging, perhaps there is something that's been getting in your way of your writing. Or maybe it's something that you have finally cleared. You've cleared the deck with that thing and you're no longer doing it. Another thing could be that it could be vice versa, that you've been writing so much and not leaving your house, not socializing, which I'm not a big fan of socializing. So I'm not trying to say that that could be something you need to do because you know yourself better than I do. I don't enjoy socializing. I don't do it much, but sometimes I do think we can get so wrapped up in our writing and our fictional worlds because they're a comfort to us that we can sort of cut ourselves off from, I don't know if I want to say reality, but the outside world, other people, and again, no judgment, I understand. I am happy to isolate and be at home and not interact with the outside world these days. So it's just all about finding that sweet spot for ourselves. And like I said earlier, you know yourself better than I do, sorry, gnats. I found this interesting. The I mentioned earlier that this full moon is also called the buck full moon. This is named in the Native American tradition. And the reason for that is that this is the time of year when the young male deer, when their antlers start to poke out through their skin. And from there, then it begins the cycle of that growth for them, of the growth of their antlers. And when this starts to happen, when the growth starts to happen, the hardening process happens. So this kind of aligns and reflects with this idea that this full moon in Capricorn is a culmination of something or of some things right? Just like the hardening of the antlers, this is a hardening, if you will, something. So think about how that might pertain to your writing practice. What is being set in place? Jimmy says you may also have this desire to clean house. I don't think he means that literally, although, you know, maybe, but clean house in terms of, I'm thinking in terms of energy, in terms of duties and responsibilities, maybe in terms of people. So it's a time to clean house, so to speak, right? It's about breaking patterns which I think I was getting at a bit earlier. So it might mean, as I said, removing certain distractions from your life that prevent you from writing. And like I said, we go over this in the Alchemy of Writing webinar. You know, we I talk about it in a way that will get you thinking about the details of your day-to-day -day life and how it impacts your writing. So doing this could cause some shakeups for some people because it's about gaining some much needed clarity and possibly releasing some heavy emotions. Another little tidbit that I picked up was from The Magic of I. And if you don't know them, I recommend them. It's They are the company that I get my gorgeous yearly planner that I just love. It has a silver and a gold ribbon that you can use as bookmarks. 
It has gilded pages and the cover is just really luscious to touch. So check out Magic of Eye. I'm also on their email list and they mention briefly about this full moon. And they say that it's about releasing control over outcomes and that doing this allows for wondrous possibilities and collaborations. And they cite astrologer Colin Bedell who says that this full moon is about choosing a different agenda. So this all kind of relates to what I've been talking about and releasing control, right? about what comes next. And he says, this is about a more divine agenda. And I really love that when thinking about writing practice, because you may have heard me say before that my writing practice is part of my spiritual practice. And when I write and I'm in that deep flow, I feel that I am accessing and writing from deep within myself and from far outside myself. And to me, that's the divine. So what is your divine agenda when it comes to your writing practice? Are you getting clear about what you need to achieve success as a writer? What Whatever that means to you because we can write just for the sake of writing and that's totally fine if you know if that's what you want to do but I believe it helps if we can have a goal in mind whether that's just a goal to you know finish a story by a certain time or whether it's to be published you know say that I want to be published more then that means I need to develop a different kind of strategy to see that happen than to just make sure I write every day I have to have a different strategy in place so think also about what you're doing to clean house, to make your writing easier so that you can achieve better flow, so that you can write more often. And this mention of collaboration, I found that interesting. Let's think about that for a minute. Have you thought at times that it might be interesting to collaborate with someone on a writing project? Have you been thinking about that? Do you know of someone that you could collaborate with? Or maybe the collaboration is with yourself. And by that, I mean, maybe you're finding that you're writing now from a deeper place within yourself. And this would be a collaboration with the self or a cooperation with the self, right? And maybe you're realizing this because you've overcome some kind of block that you've had that's been holding your back. And so you are more in cooperation with yourself, with your creative self. Rick Levine points out that this full moon is at 29 degrees, which means that it will be moving into another sign, into Aquarius, just after it's full. So the full moon happens at 3.17 a.m. It then changes signs at 4.42 a.m. So just about an hour and a half later. A lot, and I'm going to try and describe this the best way I can. There's going to be a lot happening within minutes and just a few hours of each other all around this full moon. So it's a very complex, kind of messy full moon, if you will. And it's going to be a somewhat complicated day energetically. As I've said a few times, this full moon represents a culmination of something. Maybe what you were doing two weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Check your calendar and see what you were doing around those two times and see if you can make anything line up. Rick also also points out that the moon, when it is full, will conjunct or align with Pluto. This is about four hours after it's full. Now get this, before that, the moon will sextile Neptune and trine Uranus a few hours prior to the full moon, and it will trine Mars just after the full moon. All right, so what does all that mean? Let me see if I can make sense of it. Oh, but before that, Venus will be sextiling Jupiter. Rick points out that this can feel rather sweet. There can be a sweetness to this configuration of Venus sextiling Jupiter. He cautions that it can sugarcoat something that should not be sugarcoated. This is interesting that this is happening on the very day that something is coming to fruition or culmination. So keep an eye out for that. Like I said before, it might be a kind of like confusing sort of day. I think the best thing on days like that is to just be as mindful and aware as we can. I'm always a fan of resorting to my writing. If the day just feels like a, like, oh, fuck it, I can't deal with this kind of day, I like to resort to my writing. It kind of puts things in place for me. We can also use these confusing days when we're really paying attention to use as fodder for our fiction, for maybe something we're working on now or for something in the future. Here's another important aspect. If that all isn't enough, another important aspect that's happening, and I think this is this is a really important one. Mercury will be squaring Uranus while Uranus is exact with Algol. Now, I had never heard of Algol, so I had to look it up. Algol is a binary star in the constellation of Perseus, and it's considered to be one of the most malefic fixed stars. So what does malefic mean? I think I talked about this in the last full moon video I did. Malefic in astrology means negative. It's not a great energy. Mars, for instance, is considered a malefic planet. Mars can be about violence 
and war, that kind of thing. Algal is the same, and it's considered to be one of the most. So when we think about the fact that Mercury is squaring Uranus, which is exact with this malefic fixed star, and Mercury is about words, to me, this seems very, very consequential for writers, because words are our life. So I think when we put words on the page, it's it's very safe, because we can write any, any damn thing we want, and then we get to choose who sees it. The words we speak, it's a different thing. Thing. Once they're out there, they're out there. And so I would just caution that on this very confusing full moon day, really think about what we say. But it, it looks like it's going to be a tricky day. And one other thing that I don't even know at this point if I can make sense of all this, but the full moon will be sextiling Neptune as well, just minutes after the full moon. So minutes after the moon hits full status, it will be sextiling Neptune. And Neptune, if you remember, is about illusion. So, yeah, things may not be what they seem. And so it, it, it will be, like I said, a very tricky day. This means then that the sun will be trining Neptune in the evening, like at 8.25 p.m. Pacific time. And Rick Levine says that he believes that this means a foreshadowing of something to come. And he said what that might be, he doesn't know. But just his interpretation of these configurations is that this will be a foreshadowing of what's to come. If you can take this and apply it to your writing life, what might that mean? Really pay attention on this day, how your writing life and the rest of your life kind of ebb and flow with each other, or if they do, and then do your best to make sense of what that all means. And this doesn't mean you need to be writing on this day, because our writing practice is always there. It's a part of us. And then the rest of our life influences and impacts our writing life. So Rick also says that these sequences will be with us for the next couple of years. What he means by that is the sequence of events, these sextiles in particular, so sextiles are not bad things. They're not like squares. Some of these slower moving planets that we're dealing with now will be going in and out of trines and sextiles over the next two years. All right, so it might be kind of nice, actually. I'm planning on it being nice and I'm planning on it helping my writing and I'm planning on lots of great things happening for me and my writing over the next two years and for you as as well. So that's a lot. That is a lot, a lot. And I'm not sure I've offered anything cohesive, but the big takeaway is that there's a lot going on. So we need to be very plugged in and aware and observant. Even observant, I think of our own reactions to things, our own language that we use, our own emotional responses to things, just kind of being, stepping back and being an observer of ourselves. And I think using our observational skills during this time is really important. Because as I always say, anything and everything that we experience and witness will inform, influence, impact, and enhance our writing. I would love to hear from you how your full moon went in the comments, as well as how your writing's going, and what interpretations and insights you've had about yourself and your own writing practice. I'd love to hear. As always, sending you mad writing mojo. Happy writing.